and welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be blasting Kill Towns, Undergang, A Misanthropology, The Head Split Records, American Edition, with the amazing white cover. I fucking love this design. Sadly, the last time I saw Undergang, they only had this design in black, which... It doesn't matter because it's still fucking sick. But I love this record. I don't love it as much as I love Durden Lager Al Asar, but it's fucking so good. And I can't wait to hear their new full length as a four piece. As the maxi single kind of gave you a little taste of how fucking heavy that beast is gonna be and I kind of did a little little fib yesterday because I didn't know that the homie Patrick Hopkins was gonna once again deliver some gnarly goods to my doorstep and you know how I always say print's not dead print is a rotting corpse but sometimes it gets reanimated and when it does it's done fucking right, and this right here in my hands is a great example of that. This is issue one of Echoes of Death. And we have interviews with Undeath, Nocturnus AD, Crips, Scalifel, Kaoten, and the record label Lycanthropic Chance. Extremely Rotten Productions and a bunch of other sick-ass labels helped, you know, put this together with advertisements. I take it, unless they were just, you know, being generous and, you know, just helping out this zine get, you know, their feet wet and whatnot. Because this lineup is gnarly when it comes to, you know, a first issues interviews. And I think it's really sick that there's, like, this zine revival at the moment. Like, I know David from ERP and Undergang has been working on Putrid Zine for, like, a year now. And he's finally released it to the masses. And I need to get my hands on that fucking filthy, filthy rag. Like, seriously, it's gonna be awesome. And this right here as well. You can, like, smell the death from the pages. It's fucking awesome. Sometimes, you know, I, I keep remembering my time when it came to, you know, when I was a writer. And I legit thought I was going to get a paycheck. Like, little did I know that print was really, really dying during this time period. Like... My high school dream was actually accomplished. Few people I know can actually say that. And you might be like, oh, like you wanted to write for a BMX magazine? That was your fucking goal in life? Well, when that's all you really have besides music? Yeah, but the reason I got that gig was I was a state award winner for a short story a fiction short story I wrote called Math Book Massacre told from the eyes of a math book it's a timepiece if you don't know what a timepiece is then you didn't pay attention in English class but it's a pretty interesting timepiece like I go back and read it and I'm like damn like <laughs> I was pretty good, and uh, even some of my short stories when I was like in elementary school, they are extremely violent, and it all has to do with my upbringing and being allowed to watch horror and sci-fi films from a young age, but when it came to writing for Dig BMX Magazine, I didn't read the writing on the wall that, you know... The magazine was getting thinner because there was less advertisers and they were getting ready to take the jump completely to an online platform 
and only putting out one printed issue a year and kind of, you know, making it, like, legit and, like, 100% something that you would spend, like, $20 on. And I understand completely, but you know that term, it ain't a job if you don't get paid? Well, I remember, like, my dad being like, when are you going to get a fucking job? And I'd be like, I have a job. Where's the paycheck? And I always would, like, brush it off. I'd be like, it's going to come one day. And then, like, one time I did, like, a 17-page interview article. And that was when I kind of realized, this is your dream, but you're not getting paid for it. This is coming from the fucking heart. This is a subject you actually fucking care about enough to put and invest all this time in. And just going to, like, at the time, like, Barnes & Noble. And, like, picking up the magazine and seeing an article that you wrote. It was the fucking coolest thing in the world. And the same when I was an intern at Decibel. Like, just seeing my name in Decibel Magazine, I was like, that's fucking sick. I even got Reader of the Month one time after I was a intern, which I thought was fucking sick. Like, thanks, Albert, and fucking Hales. Like, Decibel is one of the only magazines when it comes to extreme music that, you know, is still around and still pretty relevant, even though I feel like sometimes the advertisers, obviously, you know, you don't want to piss off your main advertisers. And you'll kind of notice that certain labels that advertise get a lot more, you know, praise and whatnot than some that don't. But... Decibel still dives into the fucking depths of the underground in a single page they normally have in the review section. Um, I think it's through a rumbly speaker or throw me a frickin' bone where it goes over like underground bands and whatnot and through a rumbly speaker it's like a little review of demos that just came out and shit. And normally by the time you read it those demos are long sold out but like it's a great way to find out about new music, but zines like this, Echoes of Death, this is the real fucking deal, and like, same with all the head split newsletters and whatnot, like, it's one of the reasons I love head split so much, like, this type of stuff, Dylan doesn't need to do it, but he does it out of love of extreme music, and... That's all that fucking matters, man. And at the end of the day, I think that's what makes Echoes of Death fucking so enjoyable. Like, I was, I read this a couple times, front to back. And, because, like, you're not going to read a Crips interview, like, in Revolver or some bullshit. Like, yeah, I saw Crips had a little interview in Decibel before, but, like, Kaoten? No. Undeath? No. Nocturnus? Yes. But having, you know, a Mike Browning interview in your first zine? Fuck yeah. And this is very enjoyable. Great art and whatnot. And this is four pounds. Not four pounds weight. It's four pounds to buy. So I'm guessing that this zine is from the UK. I am not 100% sure. I sent them a message, but I don't know what time it is in the UK when I sent that message. And I didn't check my Instagram messages, so I apologize. But all artworks here are by Citrus Art, which is S-Y-R-T-I-S and it's fucking sick. And you have 40 pages of fucking terror with an interview with Undeath, K.O. in Crips, Nocturnus A.D., Scalifal, Lycanthropic Chance, and then you have some reviews. 
But I'm not going to spoil too much here, but we have an interview with Alexander Jones of Undeath. And very, very interesting stuff because the reason Undeath does not have a live bass player is because they can't find one. So if you live in the Rochester, New York area and you play bass and you want to play some fucking sick death metal, hit up Undeath and help them out. But it's pretty fucking sick. There's like recommendations from Undeath. And it's cool. There's also an awesome maggot stomp ad for ki kind of a little mock of United Guttural. Super sick shit. United Filth. I think that's fucking awesome. But yeah. Then we have a nice Chaotin interview with Soren Wiltonsens. And... You know, Kill Town Death Metal. I fucking love Kaoten. And I love the good old cut and paste style of zine making. Even though everything's laminated and super nice, it's worth, you know, your fucking money. Like, super, super sick stuff. Very intriguing interviews. Especially, like, because you're not going to really read an interview with a band like Kaoten outside of a head split newsletter or i mean obviously i know one of the members of Kaoten is actually working with david on putrid zine yeah it says it right here so yeah uh soren and david are working on the putrid zine that's what it's called putrid zine so it's going to be awesome once I get my hands on that, hopefully, in the near future. But super, super sick stuff. Like, this came out a little bit after the COVID shit started canceling everything. So, like, some of the flyers and tour notifications are a little out of date. But still, like, for example, after this ERP nice fucking full page Kaoten ad... You have a Crypt interview with fucking Anti. And it doesn't really seem like Anti wanted to talk too much. But at the same time, you know, he seemed pretty gutted about, like, how busy the year was looking for Crips and whatnot. Because they just had gotten back from a South American tour. And it's like, any tour story you'd like to relate? No comment. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of fucking funny, but like, what's next for 2020? You already announced the tour in the U.S. with Spectral Voice, and your third participation at Killtown Death Fest. Seems like you'll be quite busy this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We were forced to cancel the U.S. tour of Spectral Voice. The year was looking really busy, but suddenly, you know... Out of 16 confirmed concerts, there's only three left. That fucking is a bummer. And it goes into, you know, the replacement with uh, Juka leaving the band and everything. Super cool stuff. Very, very interesting. They go into um, cadaveric circulation and talking about where they draw influences from, which is always interesting. And it's always a great way... Again, if you're new to the genre, like, it's a great way to find out about fucking, you know, new bands and whatnot. And I love this as well. They ask a question. LP, CDs, or tapes? What's your team? Vinyl for full lengths and EP tapes for demos. Haven't bought any CDs in a long time. I don't have a player besides the computer. I even prefer digital over CDs nowadays. Fucking A. Hold on one second. We have to flip this bad boy over. And we'll get right back to uh, the zine. Now where was I? I lost my place because I suck. Crips. So, yeah, they have a fucking sick little interview here, and I really enjoy it. Fucking awesome stuff. 
Here we have a nice Crypt Worm ad. MSUO, but also Life After Death is handling the cassette version of this bad boy. It's dropping soon, and we have a Nocturnus AD interview with Mike Browning, who goes over a little bit of his history from being in Incubus, not the Incubus you're thinking of, the death metal Incubus, the demos. Like, you know, he was in Morbid Angel back when they recorded, in my opinion, their best record when it comes to, like, the evilness that is Morbid Angel, or I should say was Morbid Angel, and that's Abominations of Desolation, which was meant to originally be their first full length, but Altars of Madness came around, and it's awesome having both versions, you know, you can kind of go back and forth. But it's an awesome little interview. They talk about, you know, how different the death metal scene is today compared to the past. And just, like, talking about how Paradox has ties in, has ties with the key. It's fucking cool. And I don't want to spoil too much. The Scalifal interview is pretty fucking sick. Because, like, uh, their split with cadaveric fumes was fucking badass. Like, seriously, that was a killer, killer 7-inch. I, I really enjoyed that. And just super, super cool stuff from some French death metal maniacs. It looks like they were going to be playing the Akuza Death Fest. But, I don't know what's going on with that. But then it goes into some of the lyrical subject matter and some of the weird fiction tales that, you know, coat their lyrical content. H.P. Lovecraft, obviously. And, like, just tons and tons of fucking sick shit. Like, I dig it. And this, like, little fucking Lovecraftian beast just puts a smile on my face. And then we have a Lycanthropic Chance little advertisement before their interview. And, uh, I'm pretty sure Lycanthropic Chance is a German record label just because he says, Guten Tag! And thank you for your interest in this form of interview. Supporting underground music that's not getting driven by commercial intentions. Thank you! I was trying to talk to a buddy of mine who's having a hard time getting, like, interviews done with bands for, like, a website I guess he works for, and I was like, dude, just do it yourself then. Fuck them. If they're not helping you out, fuck it. And he seemed like he was too good for that. But I, I tried. I was like, dude, like, Cut and paste, like, hit up some underground bands. Like, you live in the Pacific Northwest, man. You have, like, one of the best scenes in America at your fingertips. But you're going after bands like Cattle Decapitation? Like, I get you want to interview these bigger bands, but, like, you have a chance to do it yourself and get the fucking satisfaction of... It's whatever, but... I love the artwork here. It's just fucking putrid and awesome. And reading, you know, like what a like a label like Lycanthropic Chance like has to go through and whatnot. Like, let's admit anything is possible. Which band would you sign, and what would your dream band be to sign? Hmm. To be honest, I'm extremely happy with the bands I am allowed to release music of. I would like to get better in promoting these releases and maybe get more shows for the bands. I'm talking as a fan now. Autopsy or Repulsion? The answer, Bolt Thrower. That's a hard one, actually. I couldn't answer that, but I would have to say Repulsion. I fucking love Repulsion. Come on. 
I got Scott and Matt to sign my copy of Horrified. Like, to me, that was such a big deal. Like, I didn't want to bother Scott either. I saw Scott talking, and I was like, hey, man, like, great set. And, like, shook his hand, and I had the record in my hand. I was like, yo, I'm not trying to be that guy, but, like, do you mind signing the lyric sheet? And he fucking calls Matt Olvo over, and I'm like, Oh my god, if only Grave Dave was here, or Dave Grave, I'm sorry, like, it was fucking sick. But, like, here's a nice little show flyer. Remember shows? I do. And then we have some reviews, like, uh, Perineni from Finland, Suppression from Chile, Ulcerat, Chthonic Deity... And they're very well written, right to the point, enjoyable, and that's it. Issue one of Echoes of Death, proving that print is not dead. And sometimes you just have to fucking do the work and do it yourself. Super, super awesome stuff here, and stay rotten. I hope you enjoy this zine as much as I love doing it. On top, you will discover tons of information and bands thanks to it. There's no name of who did this. So I'm kind of con like That's the one thing I'm confused about. I would love to know who's behind Echoes of Death because they did a great fucking job. So I'm going to hit them up more on social media and try and get to the bottom of it because... I can't wait for issue two because this really tickled my fancy. Super sick stuff though, seriously. Like, I highly suggest checking this out. Like, you know, if you're a fan of any of these bands, it's definitely worth reading more into. Especially bands a lot more underground, like Undeath, Kaoten. It's fucking something that's definitely interesting to listen. I meant to read, not listen to. Because <laughs> I know a lot of you would be like, but it's not on my phone. It's not digital. Fuck you then. Print is not dead. It's just a rotting corpse that is being resuscitated back to life via death metal and I'm sure there's some sick black metal zines out there there's tons and tons of fucking punk crust grind black metal etc zines out there but I feel like death metal you know if you even go back and look at some of the zines from the past and whatnot it seems like anytime you see a documentary somebody in like a band had a zine that's how they built the foundation of their band was that zine and it helped them build their band up find members and get more people interested because it would be like hey that's the dude from fucking you know malignant magazine or something like that off the top of my head but I think that's fucking sick, and DIY or die, and just proving, you know, once again that don't believe the hype. Print may be dead when it comes to a lot of mainstream releases, but the underground is alive and well when it comes to printed product. But... We were blasting Copenhagen, Denmark, a.k.a. Kill Towns, Undergang, Misanthropology, on Headsplit Records. Sick shit. Thank you, Pat Hopkins. And hails to Echoes of Death fanzine, issue number one. And thank you, Maniacs at Home, for watching. You fucking rule. Who? <laughs>